I did. There we go. Okay, it's recording. So uh, the idea is um, we're, we're getting into uh, creating sampling plans, basically planning out your study, right? Um, and uh, one of the things that you're going to have to figure out is your sampling plan. So how specifically, right? And you have to be like to the letter specific, how are you going to get your data? Right. And uh, we were beginning to discuss what uh, a bias is. So a sampling plan is bias if it systematically favors certain outcomes over others. So if the way that you're questioning people, right, uh, is uh, favors certain outcomes over others, then you have something biased. So we did a couple examples over here. Um, am I sharing the right thing? Yeah, I am. Okay. Um, so the first one was, uh, should consumers have the right to repair their own devices, right? And I asked you guys all, like, give me two locations where you would get uh, varying um, answers, right? Uh, some of you guys said Apple HQ, they'll probably say, hell no, give me your money. And then if you go to a repair shop, right, just a run of the mill mom and pop repair shop, they'll probably say, yes, you should be able to fix your own stuff, right? Because it's yours, you paid for it, right? Similar things. Um, uh, should uh, people be drug tested in order to receive government benefits, right? And you guys have, you guys gave me two separate locations where you would get uh, different uh, responses depending on the people, right? So the first one was if you ask that same question uh, at, a con at a Trump rally, you'll get certain answers. And if you ask it at a Bernie rally, you'll get separate answers, right? So both of those depending on where you ask them. So if you completely ask them, uh, if, you, if you ask at the Trump rally, you're gonna get favorable results toward the conservative views, right? And if you ask it at a Bernie rally, you're gonna get favorable re reviews uh, on the liberal side, right? Does that make sense? So let's do an, another one, just to get the, 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 the blood pumping one more time. Should the minimum wage be $15 the hour? Give me two locations. SF in the entirety of Alabama. <laughs> so somebody said what? So Connor said SF and oh, San Francisco. I don't so know San Francisco, San Francisco. Answer. So give me the answer for San Francisco. It would be yes because it's a high cost of living, so they need more money. And then right. pick any city in Alabama. It's a low cost of living, so they wouldn't need that much money. Right, and then Alabama. It'd be no, because what? It's a low cost of living, and right. they're more conservative for that matter. Okay, so you guys remember that, right? So, if we ask this question in San Francisco, we are biasing toward the yes results, right? And then if we ask the same question in Alabama, we're biasing toward the no results, right? So depending on what you ask, you get a favorable outcome one way or the other, creating your bias, which is something you don't want. So the idea, right, was to ask this question at a good mixture of both, right? You wanna get a nice, uh, the best representation possible, right? Okay, so. Uh, okay, uh, so I got a couple more questions here, right? Uh, which sampling plan produces the most reliable estimate and why do you think so? So A is 50 students at random from the list of uh, students insight email addresses uh, 100 at random from the students' insight email address addresses, uh, 200 uh, who you see texting at LMC's quad, or 300 uh, who follow LMC Twitter. So which one out of these four would produce the most reliable estimate, or the most reliable um, uh, results? Would it be B? Why would it be B? 
Well, because if it's only people texting in the quad, then you're limiting it to LMC students texting inside of a quad, which is much lower than the actual LMC population. And then for D, it's the same thing. They have to be have a phone and follow Twitter. And then, but if it's B, my knowledge, everybody's assigned an insight email. And then, right, so it says there, so everybody's it's, it's every assigned. student, and it's a larger sample than A. Right. Does that make sense? So even though, so the only difference between A and B is that B is bigger. So you're just making your, your group that you're going to be surveying uh, that much bigger. Right. And for the reasons that Connor had mentioned, right, that's the reason why C and D wouldn't work, right? You are um, just limiting yourself to people who are texting and limiting yourself to people who are on Twitter. Right, and you need a response from everybody. Got it? Yep. So, practically saying, right, these two are implicitly biased, right, because of the system that we've imposed to collect the data. And this one, it's just the group is just not big enough. We have one for 100. Got it? Mm -hmm. Boom. Okay. Uh, so, what I want to do. Uh, this is the group work portion. I'm going to split you guys up into your um, breakout rooms. And I want you guys to answer these questions. Uh, like I said, you guys can unmute yourselves uh, to discuss the questions. Um, so I'll give everybody maybe five minutes to do this. And uh, in about five minutes, I'll uh, call you guys back. I'll pop in here and there. Cool. What, 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 what questions are... Uh, this is a group work <laughs> problem two that's on page 144. Okay. So just okay. two? Yep. Okay. Okay. Bing.
Hello. Yo, yo. How are you guys doing with it? We done. Doing well, yeah. Really? Mm hmm Oh, snaps. Okay. Cool. What'd you guys get for B? What'd you guys put down for B? For B, I said random sample isn't biased. Students in method A pick snails they think is average, which is up to their interpretation. Yeah. That's what I got somewhere similar to that as well. Because if they're looking and seeing which snails look average, they're just going to pick the ones that are like average looking. But if they're right. random, then it's going to be, it's going to have a more, uh, it's going to be better because they're drawing at random instead of just picking what, what one to them looks biggest. Right, right. What do you guys see in the difference between uh, B and C? So we know that awesome. those two are the those two are the most unbiased, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what is what's the um, is one method better than the other? Uh, well, they're the same method. One's just twice the amount of random sample, right? Yeah, pretty yeah, much. Exactly. Right. So what happened with the data? It got basically it got smaller. It got more condensed. Into right. The, yeah. yeah, the laws okay. of that's what it says on the other page, right? The laws of probability. Uh, yep. State that larger random samples lead to less bias. Yep. Right. So I'll get into that in a little bit. You guys know what you're doing. I'm gonna go see. I'm gonna mess with another group. Let's see. Ha 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 ha. Okay. I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay. All right. All you guys are muted. What'd you guys get? Um, for A, I put, um, what is it asking? Um, which one produces the most spice estimates of the overall mean weight? I said A, um, it's like on the distribution, it's the least uniform, but like most spread out. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. And um, what did you put for B? For B, I said, how did I graph? I mean, let's see, illustrate the random samples produced unbiased. I said they produce unbiased weight estimates because there is random selection. Mm -hmm. Because both B and C are right. um, just random numbers instead of like A. They said, you know, the, the child picked like they chose. Um, yeah. What do you see in the difference between the data sets for B and C? Um, it's just a larger sample. C is a larger sample, so it's going to be more accurate and more uniform distribution. Okay. Right? Okay. Yeah. You guys know what you're doing. I think I'm going to call you guys back already. Most of you guys look like, yeah, you guys are all tired of it. Alrighty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. See you guys back over there. Yeah. Okay. So funny story, kind of. Let's hear it. Um, Define funny. I, mean, I guess it's not <clears throat> not entirely funny, but uh, somebody in the apartment complex next to me, I think, must have gone. They they might have they might have lost it. So they're singing uh, Beyonce, like in the middle of the parking lot. That's me. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, it sounds like this girl's got some pipes, so she doesn't sound half bad. That's not weird at all. That's not weird at all.
I mean, I guess it'd be bad if she was singing and bad if didn't know how to sing. Uh, that's where the fun. That's where the fun is. I know. Everyone sings out of tune, so you just feel right with her. Yeah, just sing along that's true. out of tune. Yeah. All right. Show. Bored. There's no entertainment. Yeah, I can dig it. Everyone in this um chat or whatever it's called class. Yeah. I'm yeah. So I have a echo again. I think it's you, Tonio. I'll mute myself. Let's see. Okay, so is Antonio still here? I just saw him disappear. Oh yeah, he is here. Okay. Uh, just FYI, Antonio. Uh, just unmute yourself if you got a question. We'll we'll do the uh the police chatter. So you unmute, say your question, and then at the end say over, and then we'll be okay. <laughs> just don't forget that you're muted and just scream into your mic because we're not yeah. responding. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Let's get to the um, business, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Let's get to business. Okay. Three methods. A. Uh, the little kids choose what looks average, weighs them, and gets an average. Right. Uh, B, pick five numbers out of a hat, choose those five snails, weigh them, get an average. And C, pick 10 numbers out of the hat, find those snails, weigh them, get an average. Okay, which one is the most biased? A. Right, so A would be the most biased, right? Why? Because they're Cause picking they're... the snails. Right, the kids. Whoa. The kids are picking the snails, right? Hey, Haley, take care of your business. I'll see you after spring break. Huh? Um, Haley had a family oh. emergency, so she's going. Um, this one's the one that has um, uh, the kids get to choose them, right? And that in itself is a bias, right? Um, how only, does kids. say it again? I said because it's only the kids, not like a random selected. Right, it's not a random selection, right? So how does B and C illustrate a random sampling? Because they're picking numbers out of a hat randomly. Right, the decision making of who get uh, what's uh, what snail gets chosen, right? is taken out of their hands. Got it? The decision. That was way off. Right, so the thing that does it for B and C, right, is uh, where is it? That each child picks five out of the hat and each child picks 10 out of the hat, right? So they can't argue with the, ch uh, with the method, right? So okay. how does, uh, how does, uh, uh, method C illustrate the larger random samples produce more accurate estimates? So how is this one better than that one more random sampling not exactly more random sampling because i think they took the same amount right so there's the same number of dots in both right well, well, b children drew five and c yeah. children drew ten so the sample can size see again hmm? can i see b and there it is. So uh, what both of you guys are saying, yeah. Um, method C has more in each sample, right? Than method B. What does B say? 
the decision making. Right, it's taken out of their hands. Got it? So my question is, uh, between B and C, right? What's the, what difference do you guys see in the two uh, histograms or in the two dot plots that, that are given? The variability. The what? It's more spread out. Or B, so right. Does that make sense? So this is more spread out. Compared to C, which is less spread out, right? So notice that if we take a look at over here, right? There's a lot less data in the fringes than there is over here. Right? And turns out that this idea that we have right here is um, one of the things that we're going to cover. It's actually one of the more serious things or the more useful things about statistics uh, that I'm going to go cover today. Okay. And that's actually going to be module 17. If we get there, I hope we do. Okay, so. Can we go back to C and I'm, so I can see that answer again? Yep. Please. More data. What are people's plans for spring break? Quarantine. That should be everyone's answer. Work. Make work. it TikToks. Wait, does that say compacted? Ew, someone say TikTok. Yes. Computed samples. Making TikToks but not getting any likes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know where the door is. You can just. Leave. Oh wow. Dang. Making TikToks. Wow, shots fired. Okay. So, mm. what I want to cover today for module 15, I want to do uh, two things here. We're going to cover a bit more about an experiment, specifically. Uh, there are two things here that I want to cover. It is uh, using direct control and using random assignment. And I think we've already gone through a bit of this. We're going to go ahead and formally present it here. Um, so direct control, I'm going to put them over here. Right? is sort of the best way I can describe it is. Wait, was that all of module 14? <laughs> yeah, that was all module 14. So direct control, let me, let me actually write. So direct control is exactly what you think it would say. Um, you are trying to directly control everything as much as you can. With all that would be like a bias. Huh? So that would be like a bias or something. Not exactly. So look, we're moving on from bias now. 
in terms of how to uh, create data for uh, your, your studies, okay? So direct control is trying to be the overlord of everything, trying to control every single thing that you can, every single variable. So you are, for your study- so Isn't that different from, isn't that different from just riding the waves? Yes, yeah, so let me, let, me, let, me, let me get to it. I'm not there yet. Oh, okay. okay. So direct control, you're trying to overlord everything. You are trying to make sure that uh, everyone in your group, everyone that you're going to be studying is female from the ages of 25 to 30 who are African-American and live in a specific city and live during a specific time. And you see what I'm saying? You are trying to control your group to the best possible extent. Does that make sense? That's what direct control means. You're trying to overlord over everybody. Random assignment is the one where we sort of ride the wave. So we know that our populations are going to be varied, right? That we'll never be able to get, you know, all our, um, we won't be able to get a big, huge group of people that are African American between the ages of 29 to 30 uh, from a specific city, from a specific place, from a specific age, having the specific mental condition that they have, whatever, right? We know that we won't be able to do that. So instead, we ride the wave. And the way we do that at is um, we just split them up, right, by random assignment. And the hope there is depending on what treatment that we provide, right? Uh, depending on what treatment we provide, that uh, all of the variables will show up in each group equally. So that's what I mean, ride the wave. Okay. So specifically, so the way that, that, um, that your guys' text is trying to cover it, right, is what if direct control tries to address potential confounding variables up front. So this is the thing that you try to overlord over. You're trying to, um, you're trying to uh, specifically uh, control everything. You're trying to control everything. Every single confounding variable that you have, you're trying to control it up front, okay? As compared to random assignments, Right, and this, this kind of definition I don't completely agree with, creates treatment groups that are similar to each other. So we are basing our groups by the treatment. We are basing our groups by the treatment, okay? And um, let me see. So if we have, so the idea here, right, is if we have the similar groups, right, and the confounding variables are in between both treatment groups sort of equally, right, then we can argue that the confounding variables have nothing to do, can't explain the differences between the treatment groups, and all we have left is the treatments themselves that explain them. Does that make sense? Mm. Um. If it doesn't, it's okay. Yeah, well, it's kind of confusing, but I'm ready to go with it. Yeah. <laughs> Start an experiment and we can assume that. To come so up. the idea is the in 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 an, in the case of an experiment the better way to take care of stuff or the better way to create your groups is by that random assignment rather than the direct control, okay. right? Because mm -hmm. uh, if you try to direct control everything, right, you're gonna forget something and then that's gonna screw up everything and then you just did a whole bunch of work for nothing. Okay. Does that make sense? It makes sense. Right, when uh, separately, right, if you do random assignment, right, Mm -hmm. You acknowledge the fact that there are confounding variables, but as you do the random assignment, you 
what we're banking on, right? And this is by and large what happens um, is that in the groups for each one of your treatments, right? Uh, the confounding uh, variables will spread out equally across all of the groups that you have, right? So if your confounding variables, the things that you were trying to sort of control, right, from direct control, if all of those confounding variables are sort of spread out in each group equally, then the conclusions you can make for each one of the groups can be completely detached from the, con the confounding variables that you have in each group. So the only thing that's left, and it's in fact what uh, you can have, in this case, you can have sort of a cause and effect um, relationship after this, is uh, that the treatments themselves that you randomly assigned were the things that actually uh, uh, produce the changes. Got it? Okay. I want everybody to skip this page. I had skipped it before. Uh, what I want to do now is I want everybody to try A and B, or sorry, two A and B and C and D. As a group or by ourselves? Come again? As a, as a group or, or yeah, by ourselves? Yeah, as a group, ourselves. as a group. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna split you guys up into your groups right now. Okay. Okay. Let's see. And... Okay, here we go. All right. Uh, hopefully you have this. Hi, Julio. Julio, you're here. <laughs> hey. <laughs> um. All right. What's up? I think we're all. We're just talking about uh, this stuff, but I think that we would work better if you weren't in here. So. <laughs> can you get out? No, I know. Oh, uh, you don't have to watch the YouTube video that's on the, on the thing. Uh, you have enough from the packet, so. Don't watch the YouTube video. Okay. Oh, yeah, I kind of thought so. Like, we were talking about that as well. Yeah, 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 no, you don't have to. Actually, let me go by the other groups to tell them. Yeah. I'm afraid they're going to be watching it. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll be back. Okay. Okay. So, he's, that's the one that, like, he's controlling, right? And so, the other one is just there for comparison. FYI, um, there says that there's a YouTube video there. That you guys can watch you don't have to watch it but it's going to take way too much that's 20 minutes of a video to watch oh yeah no. you don't got it the guy talking about Thank rats. You, sir. yeah so uh i'm just bouncing around to the groups to tell them not to watch the video so okay i gotta go tell another group now okay
Sorry. Sorry. So, uh, so, uh, Brian, really quick. Really quick. Uh, I think your packet's uh, I think is, your packet's uh, video that you guys uh, need to watch. Don't watch the video. Hold on, someone is. Hold on, someone is. Uh, hold on, someone is uh, yeah, I, that's Antonio's yeah, mic. Yeah, that's Antonio's mic. Uh, yeah. I don't know how to change it. That's the thing. I don't know how to change it. Yeah, I don't know either. I think yeah, it's a setting from, um, it's a from, the from the computer. Yeah. Uh -huh. Don't worry yeah. about it for now. Don't worry about keep it. Keep going now. with the stuff. Okay. Keep going with the oh. stuff. The, the reason why I jumped the, into you guys' group, group is, um, don't is, watch um, that video. Don't watch that video. That's it. That's it. That's it? Yeah. That's it. So from here, yeah. keep going. So from here, keep going. Um, um, okay, I'm going to go visit the last group. Okay, I'm going to go visit the last group. I think they, I think they, I think they, Okay. Hello. You guys in here? I know you guys are in here. I hear people. Okay, so uh really quick, I think your guys' packet has this YouTube video that you they want you to watch. Um yes. Don't. Don't watch it. Just move on and answer the question. The music is on me. So just go ahead, start A. Don't watch that YouTube video. Cool? Okay. Okay, I'm going to go to another breakout group really quick. I just wanted to come by and tell you guys that. Cool? Cool. Okay. Keep answering your questions. I'll be back. Listen to it then? Yeah, I know, but then there are there are two group, like groups that listen to two different kind of music. So then it's like which one? Mm. Of the two groups. Because I don't think I don't know. I well, really we can read the re we can also read the other question. Maybe I'll help us. Um, hey Julio, since you're here, can you help yeah. us? Okay. We are confused. We don't know which one is the control group. So. What's the definition of a control group? I honestly can't tell you. Anyone um, of you guys? Um, 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 it's what, like, the, um, honestly, like, I don't know, like, an exact definition, but the control group is, like, who the, ex I don't know if I'm even saying experimenter or whatever, like, the person has control, like, like oh wait, hold on, I have the definition. A scientific control is an experiment or observation designed to minimize the effects of variables other than the independent variable. This increases the reliability of the results often through a comparison between control measurements and the other measurements. Oh, okay, so right, so then the, the group who never heard music would be the control group, so then you can compare it to the two groups that did listen to music. Exactly. So that's the point behind the control group. So the control group is usually the group that gets uh, no treatment at all, right? right? So they are your baseline. Okay. So we're right? gonna put the third group because, and okay, what is the purpose of, of, a con of a control group in this experiment? Right, what is the purpose of the control group? To compare the times of a, mal a rat who never heard music versus the rats who do hear music. Exactly. Right. So if you're going to come like the question here, right, is if music affects the time it takes a rat to run a maze. Right. Right. So you're going to have a bunch of music playing for a bunch of rats. Right. Mm -hmm. And you want to find out if uh, it does better or worse, but it's better or worse from what point. From right? What? right. So not hearing music at all. Right. right. So there's got to be you've got to right. You have to have a separate group that has never heard music at all to measure it according to. Does that make sense? It is your baseline. Yeah. Boom. Okay, keep going, go to B. Okay. I'm gonna go screw around with another group. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna go to Chase's group. Don't tell him. <laughs> what?
What do you guys got? Uh, Where are you guys, first of all? I think we were on the back side. The back, the ah, C, C and D. C and D. Okay. C. So where are you guys at on C? Uh, like the module, I said it was random. Mm -hmm. So how does... So Merrill says that it claimed that, or he claimed that uh, the rats were randomly assigned, right? Yes. How does how does the data support that? How do how do your hist or your dot plots uh, support that? So the way that when I when I did my response, because I guess this is also the same question on Canvas as well, or for the module, mm -hmm. but uh, the way I looked at it was when you look at week one, you see that all the scores are pretty similar across the board. Right. Right. And then when you look at group, or week four, there, the group, the, what is it, the control group and the Mozart group are similar, but the other one's completely random. But the thing with all the groups is they're all kind of tightly compacted. Right. So that's the point behind. So if you have a random selection from the get-go, right? Yeah. Then the spread of your data is going to be very similar. Yep. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, so then it doesn't looking at each one of the dot plots, right? You can't tell which is which, mm -hmm. right? Hence the reason why it's, that, that tends to lead toward random selection. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, you guys are good. I'm gonna go with uh, another group. I had a what question you for you. Uh, were you were the, was the module stuff online, was that, were the dates on those gonna get changed or were they so I'll do whenever? Cause it says 15 and 14 was due the, they're all there. Everything that's on there now is due Tuesday or was due Tuesday. This last Tuesday? Yeah. yeah. The 24th. Oh, yeah. Okay. I need to move those then. Yeah. I thought I did. Or am I confusing? See, now I'm confusing classes because all three of my classes now have stuff that I need to move on the calendar. Yeah, because we have our modules open up to 16, but all of them were due the 24th. The 24th. So Tuesday, yeah, I think yeah. 17 is so, due today. Yeah, that I, I need to move that to. Um, I think I might make it do sometime during during spring break, but I think that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. And besides, I'm, I'm remember I'm not caring about the due dates too much anymore. Mm -hmm. After yeah. the email you sent out, I was like a little, a little worried. I was like, oh, people aren't doing their stuff. Well, yeah, I mean, yes, there there are people, and and, and I'm not joking here that I see no progress, absolutely none. I see them like right now, they're in class, right now. Um, but there is no progress for any of their online work past module six. Oof. I'm sure some people haven't even visited the math lab when it was open or done any of the modules. That's right, tough. yeah. So there's, there's a, a couple of people in the class that are like very, very, very far behind. And uh, that's why I sent out the email, just like, you know, catch up. Yeah. Catch up. You got all of spring break. That's why I stopped that. Uh, so I graded a bunch of stuff online. I, I stopped at like module eight or nine, mm -hmm. right? Because I had already seen that there were a bunch of people that already didn't turn stuff in. Yeah. Because like so a lot I, of the, when I did a lot of my responses, like a lot, I, a lot of people in my group hadn't even done it. So that's why. Right. Right. I, exactly. didn't, I didn't realize there were six people in a group. I've only seen me and Connor's name the entire time. I've I done think the, in, the in my like groups, that. yeah, I've only seen me and Ruben, and then I just... Yeah, so if it's between you guys, then that's fine. You guys will get the full points. Everybody else will get five out of tens. You guys will get the eight, nine, tens out of tens. They better get zeros if they're not doing it. Well, I mean, yeah, so if, if, if they okay. see... If I see nothing, absolutely nothing, then yes, they'll get zeros. Um, but some of, some people have, um, posted their own thing, right. But never went back to either respond to somebody else's, uh, yeah. right. Or corrected their previous response. So maybe they got their response incorrect and they were supposed to change it. They never went back to correct it. So those people are getting the five out of tens. Okay, I'm, I'm guilty of that one. 
Yeah. Least, yeah, it's fine. I mean, I have stuff, gone like, back to check. There's just no one there yet. Yeah, like I, I like I checked, and then like when I would see the one person, I because I usually wait. I don't want to just reply to the same person every time. So right. Yeah. I'll just leave it and take the five points because no one else is doing it. So. Yeah, and I mean, for the most part, I, so those responses go to a portion of your grade that has more than enough other spots where it makes up for. I'm oh, missing yeah. five points. Yeah, there, there, there's you can get more than enough points in this class to yeah. to make up for it. Yeah, so you don't have to worry about it too much. Oh yeah, it makes it. I mean, I, like I was on my homework, but like with this whole like online thing, it's it's so much harder just to to get yeah. it done. Because I I just like going to the math lab and doing it now. It's like I sit at right. home and get distracted all day. Right. Yeah. That's exactly what happened to me. So, all right, I'm gonna go mess with another group. Later. Later. You guys. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What'd you guys get? What'd you guys answers. Get? Yeah, answers. What'd you guys get? Did you guys get to see? Yeah. What'd you guys get? What'd you guys put down? For C? Yeah. Um, we put yes because in the beginning it was they're all like scattered about the same for each and then right. by the end of the four weeks each one had sort of grouped up into their own little spot right on the graph with a seemingly yep. normal distribution mm -hmm. ish yeah and that's the point so usually when you look at at data and uh uh you can't tell one group from another right just like um the before the like once the treatment the treatments were assigned but none of the music was played for them so the very first week mm -hmm. right all of that data was like spread out uh in all three cases about the same amount right oh that so usually, that means it's like a good sample right that usually mm -hmm. indicates a good sample that you have uh your groups were actually randomly selected rather than uh created using a biased method of some sort mm -hmm. got it yeah mm -hmm. okay i'm gonna go bug other people you guys know what you're doing mm. hey. i'm gonna go to them did i come to you guys already yeah but we i mean you could stay with us for a little bit if you want to help us yeah so mm -hmm. where are you guys at uh we just started c um, okay so how does the data support the claim that he picked them randomly? Well, in well, what I just said, like in week one, it looks like that they have like very similar, like the data is like spread pretty similarly. You know what I mean? Like not exactly, but like it looks like, you know, like they were just a bunch of random ass rats that they spread over all three, you know, made like, <laughs> like all that kind of stuff. They are a bunch of random ass rats that were spread over three groups. Exactly yeah, like it. randomly, you know what I mean? Like Right. Because they have like they they have like very like the means are like very very close to each other like the 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 Mozart group and the Antax group have like uh kind of like you know extreme outliers on both sides right. uh, or just on the one side for Mozart but like um but like the majority of the data like the the average like the typical data is all in the same right so they're yeah. all clumped up in sort of like yes they do have outliers. Yes, one of the groups doesn't have too many outliers, right? Yeah. But the big bunch of the group. Yeah, is right? all together. Right, they're all together. They're sitting around the same numbers, right? Mm -hmm. So usually when you have something like this, that's a, the, sort of like the telltale sign that you uh, honestly chose the rats randomly. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, and then for D, uh, yeah. I mean, that, that one's pretty obvious. I would say like, I mean, I I guess we know because these aren't the same. These like they're not put on the same. Uh, what is that going called? Like then the number line isn't like the same as the top of the bottom. Line. No, they so they uh, they had to change it to compensate for the, the changes from each yeah, group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, or yeah, and like they the other ones went like they regressed a little bit, but um, yeah, I would say that it does affect the uh, the rats' performance because. Um, basically, the entire like spread of the Mozart and the what does that say? I'm guessing that's like this main needs to know me. Oh, the control group, yeah. Like, right. both of them, um, they regressed like their entire thing regressed, like the whole study, the whole group, 
And then for the anthrax group, like the entire group is doing phenomenal. I mean, I don't know if that's good or not. Does that mean? Oh, that's second. So, cause that's so that's bad. Yeah. If big. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm like kind of like half doing this, so I'm sorry if I'm messing up. But no, you're good. You're good. I'm um, getting the point. Yeah. So like, no, these ones are yeah the anthra or the control group and the Mozart group or the Mozart group makes you way faster. Like all their typical values. Are, I mean, pretty much all their values are better than control and obviously way better than anthrax and listening to anthrax apparently makes you fucking not want to do i don't, I curse way too much i'm sorry julio but i just want to do like nothing you know no i know i gotta give you guys a break i'll, I'll bring you guys back right now we'll cover right. this problem and then we'll go on to a break okay okay That was fun, wasn't it? Hey, yo, Julio, where's our brain? Hey, yo, Julio, <laughs> That's what I was talking about in Sammy's group just now. Uh, we'll we'll cover this problem real quick, and then we'll go on break. And then we'll go on break. My echo is awesome. My echo is awesome. Oh, let me mute myself. <laughs> Pennsylvania grocery store loses $35,000 worth of food after a woman deliberately coughed on produce. Damn. What a piece of Did you guys hear the, the uh, uh, I guess there's a, uh, was it an in Instagram guy influencer? Uh, clean toilets? No, no, he oh, just deliberately like uh, he he made a a video of himself licking like a bunch of bottles, right? Oh, and, yeah, like thrown in jail or something. Yeah, he got he got uh charged with uh, uh as a terrorist. <laughs> like, has terrorist charges? I'm dead. Why? I think that's what they're doing with most of those cases. Yeah, they're because they're... it's domestic terrorism. Yep. Um, the peak is yet to come. Yeah, the peak is yet to come. Yet these fools are licking bottles and coughing on produce. So yeah, some girl in my old school made a video of herself like licking the like licking the toilet. Oh like, Jesus Christ! Nasty. Oh Lord! Like, almost as bad as licking the ice cream. Yeah, it wasn't. I mean, who's uh, Mark? Yeah. Um, it wasn't a good idea to lick a toilet seat to begin with yeah, no. for the coronavirus. <laughs> and you're going yeah, around it's like it's just not a good idea in general, you feel? Yeah, you are licking the collective ass cheats of everybody who's ever sat there. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon my French. You guys already know I curse way too much too. So All right, it's, let's uh, quarantine has you bold. Yeah. Let's uh let's go ahead and do this number 2 really quick. Um just to cover the answers so we can have something. Um, so for A, what's the control group? The, the no, group music. no music. No music. Right. What's the purpose for them? Why do we have them around? Why do we need a control group? Comparison. So you have like a baseline to go off of right. looking at the other two. Groups. Right. I never looked at it that way, but yeah, you can do that. Yeah, so you need a baseline. If you're going to be comparing if music does anything to the, the freaking rats, right? You have to have a group that listens to no music so you can compare them against them, right? I'm going to skip B because I really want to break. Let's go to C. I really this is want to break too. Huh? I really want to break too. I know. We're almost done. That's why. That's why I skipped B. I'm going to go to C. Well, uh, I can't see um, the work that the work. Oh, I didn't share my screen, did I? Let's go. Boom. I'm just going to stall. Okay. There we go. Stalling? Okay. What's stalling? I don't know. Okay. Whoa. Wody. Come on. 
There we go. Okay. Um, for C, uh, the the guy that's doing the study says he chose them randomly, right? How does the data support that? I I I think he didn't put them on a sign groups because on week one every one had around the same time right so and the idea behind go ahead and then and then week four was to, totally different the first the first group was far far away from the ones the other two groups right do we care about week four though no Mm -mm. But that Why? is a good observation to make, though. So to determine whether or not we have random assignment, right, we got to look at that first group, that treatment, right? We have to look at that treatment and uh, see what's going on there. And I think everybody made the observation. Everybody sort of saw that they're all clumped right there, right? So some have outliers and some don't, right? But the majority of everybody is between those two values, right? Mm -hmm. Usually when you have something uh, that groups up like this, this is usually a telltale sign that things were chosen randomly. Make sense? But why, but why don't we look at the second graph? So that's after the treatments, right? That's after we made them do stuff, right? In order to determine whether or not something was randomly chosen, we need to find uh, we need to find a measure of something from the very beginning. We want to know from the very beginning if they were randomly assigned. So something after the experiment was done, right? That doesn't tell us if something was randomly chosen from the beginning. Got it? Sort of, yeah. Okay, and then the final question, does exposure to music affect the rat's performance in the maze and how does the data support the answer? So now we care about what happens four weeks after. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So, and what's our conclusion for this? Yeah. Yes. Yes, it does, right? Yes, the groups reacted different to the music. Specifically, which one did worse, which time. one did better? The metal Anthrax one did worse, did and then Mozart did better. Right, Anthrax did worse, and then Mozart did better, right? Make sense? And how can we see that from the graph? The one from the top one uh, was more towards more seconds. And also the distribution. They're more cluttered in Mozart than Amtrak. Right. Anthrax. Anthrax, right. So these guys right here, they took forever to finish, right? And compared to Mozart, right, they took very little to finish. They took one, uh, 114 seconds, about, right? Uh -huh. And specifically, right, here's where that baseline comes in, right? Here's our control group. They did it in 300 seconds, right? They did it much faster. So Mozart did it much faster than the control group did. Right, hence the reason why we need a control group. Got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, break time, go away. See you in, um, we'll see, I guess. Huh? See you in two weeks. No, not yet, not yet. You <laughs> said go away, so. Yeah. I mean, I said, just follow okay, Go shopping. away for 15, five minutes, 10 minutes. Julio, is yeah. Julio, huh? 
When does break start? Uh, right now. No. Our the other break. Oh, the other break. Uh, technically, right, right after this class for you guys. So the break is actually from, like, what is it, March 30th to April something? March 30th to April 3rd. It's actually March 30th to May 22nd. That's our spring break. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have a question on our homework that's supposed to be turned in today. Okay. Um, I'm confused on both the B sections of one and two because it asks for the percentage, but I don't know what to put into the equation for it to be a percentage. Um, Google. Which one are you looking at? Um, B on number one. Um, is this online or is it from your packet? Um, the booklet. From the okay, what page are you looking at? One thirty-four. One thirty. Oh, one three. Oh, let's go back. Uh, I need help with that the whole project thing. I don't know. Really I got the A and the A on the question two because it gives you the um the number to put in. It gives you like the circumference to put in, but for B, it asks about like, what's the percentage of a one month year old? Stuff like that, and I don't really, what are you putting to get the percentage? According to Medscape microcephaly, is a circumference more than two standard deviations. Oh, oh, okay. So you use the, the more, uh, you use the, uh, is a head circumference more than two standard deviations away. Okay, so do you just add, like, do the standard deviation twice? Thing? Right. So let me let me right, show you guys. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> There's a picture of you as a kid. <laughs> oh no! Heck no! It's not me as a kid. Uh, if you use, I know I did one of these examples already. If you use the idea, there you go. Uh, on page 127, there's a similar problem. Yeah. Doctors define a low birth weight as a birth weight more than two standard deviations below the mean. Okay. Right? Right. And in that case, what we did was um, we used the 68, 99.7 rule. Okay. Can you see my screen? Can yeah. Everybody? Yeah. So two standard deviations away means how much data is in between two standard deviations away? Okay. So did oh, you I, did you input the percent, the five percent? So no. So in this case, uh we did it by sixty eight ninety five ninety nine point seven rule. So if it's talking about stand number of standard deviations away, right? Mm -hmm. Then you don't need to use stack crunch. I think you're trying to use stack crunch for something that doesn't need stack crunch. Oh no, I was sense? trying to I was trying to put it into the the value mean and standard deviation equation. That's what I was trying to do. Oh, well for for which one? For that one that you were asking me about yeah. just now, right? Yeah. Me what page was it on? 134, right? Yeah. Whoops. Oh. Um, so that one, you need to do the um, the sixty-eight, ninety-five, ninety-nine point seven rule. That's the that's the thing you're going to be. So it's not asking you for a z-score. Right. It's not asking you for a z-score. It is just asking you. What the uh, what the percentage is, right. And for that, you need the 6895 99.7 rule. Okay. So do exactly what was, uh, what was it, on page 127? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So do you make like a graph for it too? Do you want like to see the graph for it? Uh, 
I would say put down the graph just so that it makes sense to you. Okay. It doesn't make sense to me. Uh, because it shows two numbers. I just don't know how to like get the numbers for the graph. You know what I'm saying? That's a page. There you go. Actually, page one twenty six. Oh, the page before. Okay. Yeah. Specifically, that picture right there should tell you. Yep. Yeah. How come? Um, because. One A is like on one page one thirty, correct? On three, on three A. One thirty three. On uh one thirty four question one um, A, it's it's sort of like um the the question from three A on page one thirty, correct? One thirty three, one thirty four. Yeah, it's supposed to be. Uh, from the, front, it, the 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 description on page one thirty, it's just a description. It's not m much more than that. Okay, but how come it didn't have three numbers? Which one? Because on three on question one a one thirty four says Anna is concerned that her daughter's head is a small. Her daughter's has a head. The conference of 34.25 centimeters when she is one month old. And she's considered measurements more than two FZ from the mean as unusual as Anna's daughter's hand measurement unusually. Small support your answer. So if you look at the statement for problem one, it's a, like right above it, it says, according to the WHO reports, uh, girls who are one month old have a mean head circumference of 36.55 and a standard deviation of 1.17. So it gives you the, all the numbers that you need above it if you want to compute a Z value. So you will need to compute a Z value. For question two. For question two is asking you for a Z score. Mm -hmm. So for A and B, you only need the 6895 99.7 rule. My one professor, Julio? Huh? My one professor? I'll have a mango chunk in my mouth. Come in one stop. Yeah. <laughs> um, my one professor, he was like, uh, I just got a Canvas notification or something that we have a Zoom. He, so we haven't had Zoom. I mean, if we have had it, I haven't gone, so I don't know. But I'm pretty sure we haven't had Zoom. Like, yeah. Class and it's like it's like Tuesdays and it's like same as like this one and he just sent out like a Zoom thing. He's like, all right, like let's do a Zoom this Tuesday at nine thirty five, which is our class time. But doesn't our spring break start? <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, Email. <laughs> I'm not. Wow. No one's gonna go. Yeah, nobody's gonna go. He's gonna be mad as hell. Yeah, he, somebody's he, gotta tell. Somebody should tell whoever that professor is. You should tell that professor. No, I mean, like, I'm hey, like, yo, I'm, bro. I'm, I mean, if you want to fail the class. <laughs> yeah, spring break. <laughs> yeah, I've I've been talking I've been talking to uh, uh, all my other students from my other classes, mm -hmm. and um, somebody from somebody from uh, my uh, from my pre cal class. He finally got an, a message this week, mm -hmm. like on Monday, mm -hmm. from his professor. Mm -hmm. Uh, about how the class was going to run down in Zoom. Honestly, he had not he had not heard from his professor in uh, a week and a half. Honestly, Julio, if, I think if I checked my thing like that, I could I could find but this professor. That might have been the first thing he said about it. And my my philosophy professor he just sent out like a thing like two or three days ago that was like our turn in assignment for the for the. I think you're my only professor right now. I just do. Yeah. Also, our spring break is late as hell. Like, I was just thinking about that. Like, we're just starting our spring break, and, like, I don't know anybody else that's, like, everyone else just has, like, been done there, you know? Yeah, no, I know. Is it, like, is it, is it, like, a California thing, or is it, like, a, uh, like, uh, our school district? Thing? You like a district thing? Because SF, 
State has spring break like the week before ours. Okay. Yeah, well, for our district, for Contra Costa, it's all the same. So uh, DVC, CCC, and LMC, all three of those colleges have the same spring break, which may be different from other spring breaks now. So for example, um, uh, so what ended up happening in uh, Peralta for the Peralta system, which is um, uh, College of Alameda, uh, Merritt College, Ber uh, Berkeley City College, and what's the last, Laney College. So basically Alameda County, mm -hmm. the county right next to ours. They, from one day to the next, decided to move their spring break one week ahead. So they were gonna have our, the same sp spring break as us, mm -hmm. but they moved their spring break to right now. So next week, they're gonna be back in session. I would have preferred we did it like that. Huh? I would have preferred that. Nah, I'd rather have like guaranteed most of quarantine during school. That, and that was the point. Uh, so what ended up happening for Alameda County was that they made their 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 um they made their spring break into the training week mm -hmm. for all of this this online stuff. So they're also now online. Everybody's online now. Um, they moved their spring break so that they can call the week of spring break for them the training week for their faculty and for their staff. Mm -hmm. So they were definitely not following the state's guidelines of social distancing. They made people come in to train. Did you see Liberty University? Huh? Uh, Liberty University is in Virginia. My friend is there. Yeah. Um, they're inviting students back to campus saying, God will, oh, I can't really. I mean, I, fuck it, we're in college now. God will save them. Oh. Uh, sounds like um, the vice president, right? Mm -hmm. Wasn't he praying away the virus? Yeah. <laughs> no, like I mean, like bro, this is someone like that. I mean, yeah, look who runs our country, I guess. But like, this is someone run that runs like a higher like education like institution, and this dude's inviting people back because God will protect them from the virus. And I have nothing against religion, but like, bro, like, like no, like you can't put people at risk like that. Like, in a dorm, remember the bubonic plague? What is like, religion? Seriously? Yeah. In in my dorm, right? Like in, in my dorm last year, if one person got corona, like if like if this shit happened last year, like I'm telling you, every single person would have gotten like dab pens, like jewels, like just by itself would spread through the entire fucking dorm, like dormitory. That's 150 kids. Yeah, I think that's the case for everybody, right? That I mean, like they're 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 opening up their dorms again, right? Which is just like dumb. Mm -hmm. Do they expect people to go back though? Like, yeah, people, uh, I think people are. I think my friend that goes there is like there, right? I'm actually gonna ask her right now. Yeah, because like, I don't know. You'd think that like the if they're our age, they would like know to. Yeah, but I feel like everyone that like Liberty, it's like a it's like a private uh, Catholic institution. So like everyone, um, that, like for the most part, like if you're going there, like you're like of that mindset. And like she yeah. is like she's, like one of those like types of people that's like God's gonna save me from this virus, and it's like well. You sure? Yeah. Is it God saving you from the virus, or are you just not within the um, danger population? Well, I mean, you never know. Yeah, you never know. Like yeah, everyone, know. everyone, to their family for a week and a half for spring break, and like a bunch of infected hot zones, and then coming back to the other one. Yeah. All right. I guess we got to come back from break. Julio, can I be completely honest? Yeah. I have no idea how to do this homework. Which one? The one you just explained to me. 12-2 or 12-3? Yeah, the one that's due today. Okay, so I have office hours afterwards. Okay. Um, from, what was it, 3-15 to 4-30? Okay. So I can go through the examples again uh, if you need me to. Okay, cool. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, we ready to come back? Oops, I'm a little late. I know.
And then again, am I ever on time? No. Never. Some... You're always like 10 minutes late. Yeah, I know. Like, not you have always. To, like, haul all of your stuff. In real yeah. life, too. Which is yeah. fine. Yeah, which is fine, right? Okay. Um, am I sharing the right screen again? Yeah, I am. Okay. Um, there's a lab, 15 2. We'll make it do sometime after spring break. Hopefully, on that day, we'll be back in the classroom. So I highly doubt it. Yep. Uh, which brings me to another point. Um, we've been getting word that uh, Contra Costa County Health Services is going to extend the quarantine time. To what? Uh, up until May, May 1st. Yep. Yeah, there you did that. No, you're not going back to class, right? Yeah, huh? we're probably not going back to class this yeah. semester. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's what they announced. And, uh, so the other thing that they're mentioning at on campus or through my through the emails that I keep reading is that um uh to be prepared to teach summer school this way. Yeah, that's what uh, my story is about this week. Is, yeah, you know, it's going to be pretty much all online. Yeah, and I mean th this this might be a bit far down the road, but I wouldn't be surprised if it did happen. They're also telling us to be prepared to teach fall semester this way as well. Yep. Oh wow. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no vaccine or no cure. I don't think we're going back. Nope. Yeah. Because if it's like with sports, if one person gets it, it kills the whole season. I yep. love starting my whole um, college journey freshman year with online classes that yeah. I'll be able to complete for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Time you can. Take, uh... Well, if we leave it up to Trump, we'll be back. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Leon brings a good point. If we leave it up to Trump, we'll all be back in class. Easter, by baby. April 4th. Or no, 12th. Remember, we have nothing to worry about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so like, nothing even if to it's... be concerned about. Yeah. It's a hoax. It will yeah. just go away. It's a hoax. We can all pray it away. <laughs> even if they told oh. us to come back, would we still have the, like, what it, we could just, like, decide not to if we didn't want to get sick, right? Is, like, I feel. Um... Technically, so you guys have. You guys are under no penalty to um, to be in class or not. So that's uh, you guys. Your grade is not attached to attendance. Does that make sense? So uh, you can, if you turn in all the work on time and just don't want to show up to class, and you get an A that way, then you get an A. So long How as you show up for the grade? finals. I can hear you, but I heard A. So let me hear that yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you. Um, like your grade is not based on your attendance. No part of your grade is based on your attendance. So if you figure out a way to turn in all the work and turn in all the exams and continue with the class and at the end of the semester, uh, because of percents, you have an A, then you get an A. I, it doesn't matter if you came to class or not. Is it just for this class or like for all of them? That's for all classes actually. So. If it you can figure out a way to get an A in my class without coming to it, you get the A. I just wish, like, I don't know how tests are going to work because, like... I'll figure that out eventually. My my bio teacher was telling us that everyone was going to have to have a webcam on so we can watch all of us looking at our computers. Why didn't yeah, no. <laughs> can I go or to the, the bathroom? Or the honor lock places. thing he was telling us about that kind of sounded really, really sketch. What is that? What was it? Basically, like, Honor Lock takes, like, a – it uses your webcam, and it takes, like, a 360 picture of your room, and then it watches you while you're taking the test. I'm cool off that. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm, so, Wait, it, it was – it's bad enough. So, my, my point of view of that is it's bad enough that we have to make you guys go online for stuff now. Mm -hmm. um, making you guys go out and buy something that you did need for the class to begin with is asking for too much. So that's why I am not doing that. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I just find the find it like, oh, your I'd webcam's rather... going to watch you, and then it's going to be like all big brothery, like watching <laughs> yeah. your room and stuff. That, that exactly. doesn't with me. Yeah, so that's why I'm not doing that. I'm actually going to um, uh, turn the, the tests. More than likely, my default is I'm going to just turn the tests into a take-home. And... Um, and if this happens, I know you guys are going to be calling each other, asking for answers from other people. And I'm just going to have to 
curtail that as best I can by making the test a little bit harder, not by much. Oh, but come easy. on now. Oh, come on. Remember, Google. You said the trust you know, what happened right? Google, you know. we Google that bitch. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can I mean, Google it. We can, we can Google it to an extent because if he curtails it to like, if he made it his own, then we couldn't really. Yeah. But yeah. That's his concept. Like, you, know, it's like, you, can, you can look up. To, oh, I'm not even going to keep talking, but like stats is, math is concepts, you know, like it's applied concepts. Right. Yeah. I mean, we could use our packet for most of it. So, like, right, exactly. So it'll end Google up becoming like a, a big, story. huge. Right. It'll end you up becoming Google. a big, huge, uh, like a a big, huge uh, take home. Exam. Yeah. <laughs> if we were to use our packets for it, it would just be like, hey, at least we know where, where to find the stuff. And then we move exactly. Pop. Basically, a group quiz. Like, you're right. such a group, bro. Like, I, don't, I can't even like, like begin to explain how much of a dub you're using and into us like straight up yeah you're a dog yeah there's there's not much i can do right <sighs> not, it's not much anybody can do about it so i'm in, instead of instead of taking the con the direct control i am <laughs> going to be doing the random assignment where i just i'm riding the wave i am i know that you guys have your packets i know you guys have the internet and i know you guys are sitting around doing close to nothing to the point where I'm pretty sure you guys can Google all of the stuff that's on there, but you still have to explain it the right way. Yep. And yeah, this all planned out. This entire right. speech. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, he had it ready to tie it in. <laughs> to the all right, you guys ready? Sure. I know. Now that we had 20 minutes. The defeated. I know. 20 minutes now. a break. So I want to get through this section really quick. This is, I'm going to take like five minutes on this. So we are, like I said from before, we're getting down to the point where we are separating ourselves from what's called descriptive statistics and now going into inferential statistics. Um, so what's happening now, right, is what we've been doing for the long, for up to now, we've been doing a bunch of descriptive statistics where um, we are given a bunch of data and we try to describe it the best we can, right? And just from the data itself, right? Giving results from that data, right? It wasn't attached to some bigger, uh, more general group. It wasn't to answer a bigger question. It was just trying to answer questions from the data itself, right? Inferential statistics uh, becomes the other one where we are getting a, a group but from a bigger group that we need to answer a question for, right? What page is this on? This page is, uh, this is on page 155. 155, yeah. Really so, so the picture, let me actually go down. Yeah, here we go. So the picture is this, right? Yeah. So this right here, right? That is our big, huge population. We want to answer a question about that group, right? So what do we do? We grab a smaller group and we ask that question to this smaller group, right? Depending on the answer for this group, right? We make conclusions and then we do what's called, uh, we find the probability model. We try to synthesize our answers down into something cohesive, right? And since we chose this group specifically and sort of intentionally random to best represent our big, huge population, right? Then our results that we get from here end up being a pretty good answer for what happens in the big group. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So here is where inferential statistics happens. That we grab a, let me get rid of everything one more time. That we are grabbing from a big sample, right? Or from a big population. We get a smaller sample. We answer the question, right? 
And from those, uh, from that synthesis, from that conclusion that we get from the sam uh, smaller sample, we infer something from the bigger population. Hence the reason why we call it inferential statistics. Cool? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's something, so this is the section that I am most afraid of teaching you guys because had this been in the classroom, so much better. But since it's not, it's gonna make it infinitely more difficult. So uh, what I'm about to do is I'm gonna break you guys up into, um, this might take the rest of the class time. Um, I'm gonna break you guys up into groups of, I'm gonna be, break you guys up into two groups. Okay. Now, I don't want anybody to say their response yet. Okay, I'm gonna ask this question. I don't want anybody to say their response, but I want you 24. to think your response, okay? And I want you to keep it in, in your mind, okay? And the question is, do you have a cat? Don't answer it. Okay. Don't answer it out loud, okay? I want you to think about the question, answer it for yourself, but keep it to yourself, okay? And I want you to answer that question, okay? I'm gonna split you guys up into two groups, okay? In these two groups, I want you guys to calculate the percentage of people that do have a cat. So that means within yourselves, you guys have to answer yourselves, like how many people do have cats? You guys are gonna get a percent, and then I'll bring you guys back Wait, and can then you, we'll rep huh? Can you can you explain that from the beginning? Yeah. Okay, so the question is, do you have a cat? Don't answer it. Okay. I'm going to split you guys up into two groups. And between your two groups, or sorry, within your group, find out the percentage that does have a cat. Okay. Okay. But within your group. Okay. Then I'll call you guys back. We'll record that percentage and then we'll try it again. Got it? So this is going to require us to break out into, into groups multiple times. Got it? I'm cool with that. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to recreate. Let me see. Okay, here we go. You guys ready? How many of us are in here? Nine? Yeah. So, well, there's eight of you because I just bumped in. Julio. Okay. So, how many of you guys Why have cats? I'm picking on me and Madison today. <laughs> I pick on me a lot. The other person who's in a group, too. Yeah. So, there's eight people in here. How many of you guys have cats? Did you figure it out? Uh, we have I feel like Sarah has a cat. I have a cat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love my cat. What the heck? G give me a nice yeah, count. Give me a count. Um, I'll be right one back. By one. I'll just go down the list. Uh, Madison, do you have a cat? I do have a cat. Okay, so that's one. Um, okay, wait. Oh, I lost my stage today. All right, nice. Love to you see guys. You. Did you guys get a number? Yeah, zero out of seven. Zero out of seven? Yeah. yeah. None of you guys have a cat? Nope. nope. All right. So zero out of seven. That's zero percent. Easy. Easy, lucky us. Yeah. All right. So I think the other group, the other crew is computing theirs, which means some of them have a cat. So we'll see. Looks like we're going to have to start a crusade. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> OK. 
Okay, let me go visit them really quick. All right. Got a number? Yeah. Yeah. Get out yeah. of the way. <laughs> what do you guys got? We've got five cats. So it's going to be five out of eight. Five eight. out of eight. And what's the percent? Oh, I didn't find that. Let me do that. That should be what, 62.5? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm going to call you guys back. Okay. Yeah. That was fast. Yeah. Guess what? No one has cats? Oh, hold on. Oh. Not yet. We have a lot of cat people. Hold on. Nobody say. Okay. Uh, I'm going to uh, send you guys back to your breakout rooms. Same thing within your groups, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I think, oh, they're still ending from the last one. You know, I'm tired, man. I know, I know. I'm tired, Looks man. Looks like you need to cancel class. You can't teach if you're tired. <laughs> He's in class for a week. Yeah. So that's a scheduled break, not a canceled. Yeah. Thing. Let's see. All right. So everybody's back in now. Um, I'm going to send you guys again into another two groups. Same thing. Okay. So within your group, find me your percents. You got it? I know. More cats. What's the question this time? Do you have a cat? Same question. Oh. Same question. Okay. You guys got a number? Yeah. What do you guys got? 38% of us, or three out of eight. Three out of eight, so 38%? Yes, sir. All right. Let me go to the other group really quick. This is going to become a little repetitive. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll be back. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, yeah, go, go, go. I was going to say, I, I guess I, I, we can't. I was going to say it'd probably be easier if we could make polls in our groups, but we can't. So. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Or can you do that between breakout groups, like make polls that each of us can answer? The that option disappears a, once they make the breakout groups. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'll be back. Okay. Do you guys got a number? You guys got a number? Yes. Yes. Okay. Two out of seven. Two out of seven. Okay. So what's the what's the the fraction? Sorry. The fraction. Sorry. Two out of seven. Two out of seven. Two out of seven, and that's twenty-eight percent. And that's twenty-eight percent. Twenty-eight point five. Twenty-eight point five. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna bring you guys back. I'm gonna bring you guys back. Thank <sighs> you.
Okay. Like I said for the other group, this is going to start getting repetitive. So I hope we can do this maybe two more times. All right. With new groups every time. And notice that these new these groups are random every time. Believe me, there, there, there is a point behind this. Who's got plans for spring break? Not I. Well, define plans. Well, I mean, other than work, I guess my birthday's over spring break. Oh. That's happy a, birthday. Happy quarantine. Have, 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 yeah. uh, happy I'll early be, birthday. I'll be working. Leon. Yes, sir. Miss you. <laughs> I miss you too, man. Eh? <laughs> okay. Another two rooms. You guys ready? Same question. Same thing. Give me a number. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Dude. Yep, again. You guys got a number? Three out of eight. Three out of eight. Just that percent to what? Thirty-eight percent. Thirty-seven point five percent. Yeah, we'll, we'll round it up to thirty-eight. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna go visit the other group really quick. And do you guys have a number? Yes, sir. What is it? Two out of nine, or two out of seven? Oh my god. Two okay. out of seven. Twenty-nine percent. And that's uh twenty-nine percent. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna call you guys back in. Copy that. Hold on. Oh, you're having fun, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, seems like everybody's back. One last time. It's already happening. So we'll be done after this last time, okay? So you're really gonna leave us a cliffhanger too, because after this is done. Yeah. yeah. You can just read ahead to see what the point of this is if you want. It'll probably tell you. Yeah. So I'm still on a returning to main session screen. I'm assuming you already put us in the group. Yeah, you're I'm stuck in a loading screen. So it should be back for you already. I mean the audio's there, it's just the screen, the loading square. Oh, it probably froze on you. Okay, how about that? I'm still on the screen. Oh, okay. Whenever you can join, join. Uh -huh. Okay. But we're almost well, done. I don't it's have already... to add it. So huh? whichever, group, whichever group is missing a member, just add my note to it. <laughs> yeah, okay. You guys got a number for me? Mm 
Oh, exit full screen. Do you guys have a number for me? Uh, hey, my my whole chat is just yes, 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 no. You know what I mean? Like I don't really know. Well, for you, it do you have a cat? Yeah. Yeah. So you've been you should have been responding yes the whole time. No, I, I did. No, 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 I did. I'm saying okay. like the chat thing. Yeah. Because it saves what you're like. I don't know if this. I don't even know. I'm confusing myself. But yeah. Yeah, I know. All right, this group. What number did you guys get? Oh, we got 28.5. So that's uh, two out of seven? Yes. Okay. Let me go to the other group really quick. You should. Like, uh, three out of seven. Three out like of seven. how, yeah. So it would be three out of eight. Connor can't join you guys for some reason. So uh -oh. it'll be three out of eight for you guys. So that's a 38%. Uh, okay, 38. Where would that eight come from? He had, I guess there was some person that couldn't join. So it's Yeah, just... Connor can't join for some reason. He's still like in limbo. Oh, uh, he's just floating around? Yeah, it doesn't let him come back. So let me bring you guys all back. All right. Three out of eight. So 38%. Yep. I'm still not loading the screen. Yeah, that's fine. I'm calling people back already. I think it was because, like, when I wasn't paying attention, my phone went into sleep mode. Yeah, that's fine. All right. So I won't take too much more of your guys' time. I know class is over, but I want to make a point before we move on. Um, before I let you guys go off to break. So hopefully in about two, three minutes, I'll be done. Is everybody back or are people still? Okay, there we go. All right. All right, so uh, the last point I wanna make, like I said, I wanted to just take two more minutes here just to make this point. So as you guys were, as you guys were uh, doing your thing just now, right? I've been asking each group to give me their percentages and I've been plotting them on this thing. Can everybody see my, my thing? Nope. Yes. So I grabbed percents from each group and I've been plotting the dots on this axis that's been given in, in your guys's, um, in your guys's booklets, right? So now looking at this, can somebody give me a nice guess as to how many people in our class have cats? Not a lot. Not very Specifically, nice. can somebody give me a percent? Like 35%. Why? Why'd you make that justification? Is that supposed to be on point three and point four? And did you put them to, like to the left on purpose? Well, it's supposed to be 29 and 38%. Oh, okay. So that's like what's been... So that's what's been happening repeatedly within the groups, right? And your 35% seems to be like a good guess, like, right? So like that's about halfway, right? So right there, right? That's, so this is our guess, right? Uh, we're thinking 35% because most of them happened right here, right? Make sense? Mm -hmm. And they're like so now, it's away from each other, like the other ones. Right. So now, let me ask this. How many of you guys actually have cats? So how about this? Can you raise your hand? Can, can you do the raise your hand on, uh, well, on, on uh, Zoom? So Madison has a cat. Uh, Sammy has a cat. Who else has a cat? Wait, I forgot how to raise your hand. <laughs> Got the... Heidi oh, raised her hand. I have the participants thing open. You can raise your hand. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. So Talia, I think there's five of you, huh? I believe that is correct. Yeah, I think five of you guys have cats. So 
there are currently 16 participants. So five divided by 16. Five divided by 16. What is that about? That's about 31%, 30%, maybe 29%. Thirty-one point two. Hi, Leon. Thirty-one point two percent. Okay. So notice what happened, right? I was throwing you guys randomly into smaller rooms, right, to figure out percents, right? Mm -hmm. And based off of each one of those breakouts, we got a nice guess, right? You ran an experiment on us. Right. Wow, how does it feel to be a rat? Yeah. So <laughs> notice the guess that we got. Well, we got 35%, right? <laughs> we got a good educated guess, right? And then I asked you guys flat out how many of you guys had a cat. And the actual number was not too far off from the guess. Okay. The idea here, though, is this. Notice what's happening to the data points that we've been picking up, right? Even though that uh, each one of your guys' responses within each group was random, right? They started to sit around a specific value and that value being the actual number. Make sense? And that's what statistics, and that's what statistics banks on. Uh, we're banking on that if we do repeated sampling over and over and over. So if I kept on sending you guys into your small little groups over and over and over and over and over again, that we should expect our percentages to hug that 31% that we found. And very few of them should be out here by the 62s or out here by the zeros. And so what that is called is called the law of large numbers. The law of large numbers. Right. <laughs> Specifically, what that means is as you do this multiple, multiple, multiple times, right? It will, it will the, right. The, the, the actual number that you are looking for should pop out. So you guys remember you guys remember when you were flipping uh, uh, coins right in class mm -hmm. right uh, from one flip to the next you couldn't tell me what you were gonna get right right but as you did it more and more and more often the percentage of heads versus tails became 50 percent correct correct same thing here if I would have kept on sending you guys to to your small little breakout rooms, uh, more and more. So every single time I sent you guys to your specific breakout rooms, I didn't know the percent that you guys were going to get. Right. But if I send you guys more and more and more and then start collecting the data, right. Uh, all of these values, all of those percentages that we were getting, they were going to start sitting around one specific value. And that's what we're banking on. And that's what inferential statistics is really mostly relying on this and one more thing. And we'll get to that next week. Have fun. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Skinny Say next week or next Say home hug. Uh, not, not next week. After spring break. After spring April break. April 7th. Can you send us an email to remind us? Because I'll forget. Probably. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I'll send you guys an email. All right. Is, okay. is the um, guys. 15. 15. Yep. Yep. 15.2 lab posted. On the, like the turn in for it, yeah, it's already posted. Okay. On. There's no answer. Is the the twelve point five one posted? Because when I looked, I only saw the twelve point four one. Somebody remind somebody told me that it wasn't there. I have since put it in. Okay. So if it's not there, let me know again. I'm pretty sure I put it in, so you guys don't have to worry about it. Oh yeah, there it is. Oh, no. I think it's just done about twelve point. Yeah. So we, Besides that, you can see it's twelve point five. Go out for the have lab. Fun. Yeah. Yeah, in the lab, twelve point four. Wait, was it twelve point four? It's spring break. Yeah. With the head circumference, one help for August hours. Do we go into August go. hour link or? Go here? have your spring break, but don't break spring. 
and I'm the, see everybody. the number one internet hub. Button yeah. Stay <laughs> home hub. <laughs> yeah. Julio, and just in case. 12.4 yeah. that you do today, right? Yeah, huh? it was 12.4. Yeah, yeah it's 12.4 that you yeah. do today. Oh, okay, okay. I got scared that it was something. I was doing the wrong one. Okay. Yeah. No, cool. I, I got to mix up with the Unit 5 lab. That was. Oh, got it. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Have a great break. Later. Can I, you too. Can I get some help on 12.4 lab on the Eiffel Tower? Yeah. 12.4. 12. 12.4. Let me go to 12. This is the one we were talking about on break. Yeah. I Which part? This thing at all. Which one? You, you said, uh, yeah. Because I try to compare it to what we did in, in class, but in class, uh, like how, like how you said we're supposed to do the 68, 95, 99.7 99. rule. On, uh, on five, like how it says birth weight, uh, well, on five on page, where is it? Let me show the page number. Page 127 on five is similar to what they are trying to ask for on 1A. 127 then, on five. Let me get to 127 first of all. Okay, there we go. Okay. Which one? 5A? Because, yeah, because you said it was somewhat similar to the, uh, to the graph. Yeah. The 6895. So I try yeah. to compare it, but this. But this is says the mean is 120 ounces and the SD is 20 ounces. Right. But it says on A, which are the pro probability that are randomly selected if they weigh less than 100 ounces. So that's right. something that we're comparing to right here. But on the homework lab, it says, uh, so we, we can't compare it to nothing. Because it doesn't say less than or or more than. It, it just says Anna is concerned that her daughter's head is small. Her daughter has a head circumference of 34.25 centimeters when she is one month the, old. The whatever rule that he's talking about is for B, the B section. This, well, the A I section. Would, yeah, so I would say no matter what, right? This right here, can you guys still see my screen? Yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. That right there, the thing that's right after one, right, gives you enough to draw out your distribution. So remember how I warned everybody, right? Draw the, the thing out. Which, which, which one do we draw? So draw it out. Ooh. You guys remember that? Yeah. Always draw it out. Always, always, always. I know it sounds, it sounds repetitive. It will sound repetitive, right? So we, so we draw both out. We huh? draw 36 point. So we draw both out. We draw the 36.55 centimeters and the S and the SD 117 out. And then we draw the 34.25 with the SD right. of two. So that middle one, what's that one going to be? 36.55. What is it? 36.55? Yeah, 36.55. Well, yeah. 36.55. That's always going to be your middle one, right? Mm -hmm. Give me the ones up. Which is the one, one that's afterwards. Point. What is it? Oh, okay, let me go. 36.5 plus 1 point. 37.67. 37. 37 point what? 6.7. Six, 6.7? Seven. Six, seven? Yes. And then the one after that? Thirty-eight, eight four. Thirty-eight point eight four. And the one after that? 
is 40.01. 40 40.01. 40 Are we good? Yeah. Yep. And how about the ones down? Thirty-five point three eight. Thirty-five point three eight. The next one. Thirty-four point two one. Thirty-four point two one, and what's the one after that? It'll be thirty-three point zero four. All right. Do you guys got these three? Yeah. We good here? Yeah. Okay. So now the question's asking, her head is small, right? Uh, concerned that her daughter's head is small, right? Uh, if we consider measurements more than two standard deviations away from the mean as unusual, right? Is Anne's daughter's head unusually small? Does that make sense? So let me go back over here, right? Mm -hmm. So these two, right, are one standard deviation away, right? Right. The next two are two standard deviations away, right? And then last are these three, or these two right here. These are three deviations away. Does that make sense? Because yeah. each one of these, right, is a sigma. Each one of these is a standard deviation. So, so do we get like her head size by the top of the equation for Z? Nuh-uh. Okay. So let me ask you this. Oh, because it's right here. They gave it to us. So right, her, her, right, head size is right. 34.25. 34.25. So we go over here, right? Mm -hmm. And we plop it down, right? And if we plop it down, we've realized it's about 34.25, about right here, right? You guys see it? It will, it will be on the right side because it's 0.25 now. Ah, I put it on the wrong side. The 2.5 is around over here somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. Makes sense? So, is that unusually small? Yeah. I would say yes because it's because it's oh, wait. lower than average. Yeah, but oh, it's it, not two standard deviations away. Right. It has to be more than two standard deviations away, right? Yeah. More than. It's close, but not quite. It's not, yeah. Got it? Yeah. So, that's how you answer A. Oh, so not the equation. Not the equation. So the equation okay. that this, so you're talking about this equation, the the z uh, and the mean and right. Yeah. The z is equal to x minus the mu over the sigma. That one. Yeah. Yeah, that one you'll need for a. That's the, that's the one I'm talking. Oh, for number two. For number two, right? Okay. Okay. Does that make more sense? Yes. All right. Ruben? Uh, on on one day, yes, but this whole concept got me confused. So, um, so for the B portion, do you just mm -hmm. like portion it off and then whatever percent is left? Exactly. Okay. 
So if you portion it off right at thirty five or thirty four point two five, how do you how do you well, get that percentage? Well, this is this is saying, right, more than two standard deviations away below the mean, right? Yeah. So where do I draw my line? What am I looking for? You're looking for the percentage of a one month old that would be categorized as having micro. Right. So what length is that? 36.55. Uh-uh. Well, that's your average. It would be 95%. Right. So where's is my that... cutoff? Where should, I, where should I draw my line? Where should I draw my line? 34.21. And... Right. It's a 34.21. So I need everything. So I'm going to draw my line. So here's my line, right? That is two standard deviations below the mean, right? So here's one standard deviation. Here's my mean right here. And I need two standard deviations below. So that's right there, right? And I'm looking everything for everything above the line or below the line? Above. Below, right? What are we talking about above and below? So I need everything from here down. Juliana? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's six. But how do you get that percent? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So that's sixteen percent. Right. So how much is in between these two? Well, how much is in between here and here? Um, is it the 95.45? Oh, no, right, no, no, no. It's the 68.27. No, you had it right the first time. Oh, I did? Yeah. It's oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah the 95.45. It's two standard deviations away, right? Yeah. So all of this, all of this is 95%. Yeah. Right? So is it 5%? So 5% is? Divided by 2. Yeah. Right. For so the two portions. Right. 5% five, 5 is for the two portions. Make sense? Yeah. So both of these together should be my remaining 5%. Right? So it's 2.5%. Exactly. So that means this piece has to be 2.5%. So, okay. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, how do you, like it says, how do you know? Do I, is it okay if I just wrote the graph? Yep. Okay. Actually writing the graph is the best way to explain it. I okay. don't see how you would be able to explain it without yeah. it. Right. Okay. That percentage of... Okay. Ruben? Yes. So on 2A, do we just do the same as 1A? Mm-hmm. Okay, you're going to, it's going to be hard to kind of see it because it's so little to draw it out. Draw it out the best you can. Um, you can draw tiny if you need to. Or you can just describe it. Uh, so you get this Z thing by doing the main minus the uh the S the S D or mean minus the head circumference minus the S D correct. Mm hmm So it'll be like forty seven point eighteen uh minus forty four point five. Whatever you get that divided Wait, where by you getting? Oh, 47.18. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So is the graph made the same way for part B on number two? For number two? Yep. Okay. So the only difference, though, is they is give the you... So this is for a two-year-olds, right? Right. So they're giving you a new mean and a new standard deviation. Does that make sense? 
So you just got to draw the process for how to draw one of these out is still the same. They just change the numbers on you. That's it. Got it? Okay. So for the for the numbers that go in the graph, it's just minus the standard deviation? Right. Plus standard deviations and minus standard deviations. Okay, cool. Right. So when we got here, right, it was, whoa, it was plus standard deviation there, plus another one, plus another one. And then in this direction, it was minus one, minus another, and then minus another. Okay, perfect. Okay. So both or? Yeah. Uh, a, and, and it's the uh, 1.4, correct? Right, and for this one, it's 1.4 for, for uh, part two. So the mean will, for part B will be 44.5. Uh, no, the mean is the 47.18. So I don't get you. So I said, what percentage of girls has passed the So for A, you need the Z score. So you're going to need like Z is equal yeah, to I, the X bar minus mu over sigma. And then that yeah, plus stat crunch. Oh, we have to go to the actual website to figure it out. Yeah. You're not going to be able to do. So this will give you the Z score, right? Actually, yeah. sorry. For A, you need just the formula. For B is what you need stack crunch for. Oh. And that's where you do, um, what is it? Um, Wait, isn't it just asking for the percentage? Yeah. So wouldn't it be like question Wouldn't it be like, B? yeah. Is that, I think it's calculator. There we go. So for uh, for B, that's where you have to go to. So you go to Stat Crunch, you open up your Stat Crunch, and you go to I think it's Stats, and then there's an option for Calculator, and then under Calculator wow. there's an option for Normal, and there's supposed to be like a little one of these, and then there's a box for a mean, and there's a there's a box for the standard deviation. And it has another box down below it and another one equal. So that like would just give you the percent? Yeah, that'll give you the percent. So you'll have to put in the mean, the standard deviation, and your value, right? And that will give you your percent. But there's three numbers. No. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you guys to go look at the video that came up from before this on Tuesday where I covered it. Did I put in the printout for it? No, okay, there we go. It's actually on page 131. Okay. I show you guys uh, the printouts for, well, not the printouts, but what to plug in. It's problem three on page 130. It gives you, it had to deal with uh, the, the, the distribution of chicken egg weights. So the average or the mean was two ounces and the standard deviation was 0.3. That's what had to go in to the mean and the standard deviation. And I needed everything, well, sorry, wrong one. So that went in for the mean and the standard deviation and I needed something, the percentage of eggs that were considered jumbo eggs, which was bigger than 2.5 uh, 2 grams. And that's where that 4.77 came from. Um, okay. 
because I'm on stack crunch right now and it says like less than or equal to or it says greater than or equal to or less than or equal to right it's one of those okay so so you got it says you smaller gotta, than it's less than right right okay and then what's what is the number that goes in after that right so in this case what what's the there's one number that we haven't used right uh yeah the circumference right so they give us a mean uh-huh and they give us a standard deviation right yeah so they give us the mean and they give us a standard deviation right there and we were concerned with the two-year-old that had down syndrome and that circumference is the 44.5 mm -hmm. right and the question is asking for b right what percentage of girls has a head circumference that is smaller than the girl with Down syndrome? Yeah. We doing all right? Yeah, I think I got it. Okay. Yeah. Yay. Finally, I was like looking at it earlier and I was like, oh. Yeah, this is a heavy chapter. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. I got it. Cool. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so my office hours started 20 minutes ago. Uh, I'm going to move over to my office hours. Okay. So, okay. which means I'm going to have to end this. Okay. Cool. Okay. So, uh, if you guys go to your, um, what's it called? Um, the home pages for the classes themselves. Yeah. Uh, for the Canvas page, there's a link there for uh, online office hours. So, I'll be there. Okay. Okay. So I'll see you guys in a bit if you guys come back. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh-huh.